Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spoked Wheel YouTube channel. Today we have a little bit of a different video. So as you may or may not be aware, yesterday, April 11th, was scheduled to be the date for the 2021 edition of Perry roubaix uh, Unfortunately, that race has been postponed until October because of the lockdown that is currently in place in Northern France. Um, Definitely the right call from a health and safety perspective, but from a cycling perspective, it's just a little bit disappointing because obviously the race last year was canceled as well. So it's now been over two years, I guess, since we saw Perry roubaix take place back in 2019 when Philippe Gilbert won that race. Um, so I personally wanted to get my fix of Perry roubaix so I decided to do it for a video. Um, so we're going to be playing, I guess, technically the 2020 Perry roubaix because we're on PCM 2020, we're using the 2020 World Database. Um, and as you can see, I've added Alpecin Fenix to the list of World Tour teams. Obviously, uh, if they do the right thing and bring Matthew Vanderpool to the race, he's a rider that you'd want involved. Um, so in terms of teams to pick uh Jumbo Visma, Alpecin Fenix, and De Kunic would be the three obvious ones. Uh Jumbo Visma and Alpecin Fenix, obviously for Wout Van Art and Matthew Vanderpool. Uh probably the two biggest favorites for this race, assuming they're healthy and participating when it happens. Um and then De Kunic for the Wolfpack effect have five or six different guys who could potentially win the race if things go right for them. Um, but I think I'm actually not going to pick any of those teams, and instead I'm going to go with Trek Segafredo. Uh, I really like the the duo of Mads Pedersen and Jasper Stoyven. Those are two riders that I just enjoy watching race a lot. Um, Jasper Stoyven has had some decent results in the past at Perry roubaix I believe he has a fourth place and a fifth place uh, in 2017 and 2018 to his name. Um, so he's capable of doing good things at this race. Mads Pedersen as well, decent rider for this sort of terrain. Um, so I'm going to see if I can't use that one-two punch to try and counteract some of the bigger favorites and see if we can get a decent result for Trek. Uh, I was personally really excited to see how they were going to ride at this race um, because Jasper Stoyven in particular has been on really good form this season, even dating back to last season in the Spring Classics. He won Omloop last year, and then this season he got the biggest victory of his career at Milano San Remo, um, and then just recently last week at the Tour of Flanders, he grabbed a fourth place, I believe. So he has some good legs. He's been riding well in the Classics, so we're going to try it out with Trek Segafredo and hopefully use Pedersen and Stoyven to maybe even try and shoot for a podium. All right, so this is the seven rider team that I've gone for. We have Jasper Stoyven with his 80 cobble ra rating is the highest on the team. It's going to be tough to stay with some of the bigger guns uh, with an 80 cobbles, but he'll be our best bet at staying up there. We then have Edward Toons and Mads Pedersen. Um, both have a 75 cobble rating, both very solid sprinters, so in the event that a big group came to the line, either one of those guys could get a really decent result. Um, that's part of why I like watching Trek Segafredo in this sort of race. Um, they might not have maybe the high-end star power that some other teams have, and they might not have the depth that someone like De Kunic has, but their top three of Stoyven, Toons, and Pedersen is a really, really solid trio, I think, for races like this, and they can do some interesting tactical things with them. Um, then in terms of the support riders, we have Alex Kirsch, Cone de Court, Peter Weening, and Emils Leipens. Um, Vincenzo Nibli actually has a pretty decent cobble rating, but we're going to leave him at home for this one. He's off elsewhere preparing for the Giro or something, so we don't want to disrupt his training. Um, so looking ahead as well to the magazine, the fact that Gilbert and Lampart are the two favorites makes me think that perhaps uh, 
Wout Van Aert and Matthew Vanderpool have not been selected by their teams for this race, which a little disappointing, I guess, but to be fair, it makes our our chances of winning a little bit better, I guess. Um, we have Jes Jesper Stuyven on the list of favorites here, uh, so that's good. He Realistically, he's probably going to be our, our best bet and our leader once we get into the racing, uh, which is why he is our leader in the strategy. Um, we then have Toons and Pedersen as the two free elements, guys who, if the race unfolds the right way, we could ride for either one of them, but uh, probably our goal is going to be to ride with Stoyven, and then everyone else, all those support riders, are playing the role of teammate today. Um, then just the last thing before we get into the races, uh, we have the most comfortable equipment possible uh, in terms of frames and wheels uh, because that's what you need for a race like Perry roubaix where you're going over some brutal cobble sections. Um, so I think that's about it for prep. Uh, in terms of expectations for this race, really tough to tell. I would be very happy with the podium spot for Stoyven, um, but it's all going to come down to what race day conditions the riders in the race have and how the race unfolds and who has enough energy to make a difference in the, the key parts of the race. So we're going to do our best to keep our big guys protected and out of the wind and in a good position. And then once we get into the, the decisive part of the race, we'll let them do their thing. Um, so let's get right into it. All right, so we're underway at Perry roubaix We still got over 250 kilometers ahead of us. Right now we're trying to put Peter Weening in the early breakaway of the day, just to have a rider up the road uh, in case that ends up being useful later on. Um, seems like teams are chasing pretty hard right now to try and control the breakaway, so it's going to be a process. Um, but other than that, we've got uh, Pedersen, Stoyven, and Tunes up at the front with our other three riders protecting them. Um, Pedersen is on a minus two day for his race day condition, uh, while well, Stoyven and Tunes are both even. Um, so because of that, it's probably going to be Stoyven who gets the nice, nice plus two to his cobbles. He's probably going to be our real shot at getting on the podium at this race. Uh, luckily for Pedersen, the negative isn't impacting his cobbles rating, so he should still be decent in that regard, but it is a little bit unfortunate that he has that minus two. Um, so it does seem like uh, Van Aert and Van Der Poel are not here. Um, on the one hand, it's too bad because they're the big favorites and you want to see them in the race, but on the other hand, it increases our chances of getting a good result. So we're just going to go ahead and keep trying to establish this breakaway with Peter Weening, uh, and then we will continue to look after our big guys and keep them up near the front. Um, as you can see from the profile, ton of cobblestones on the map. If you're not familiar with Perry roubaix that's what it's all about. Uh, you got to be a really powerful rider to win this race, to survive over the cobblestones and put yourself in a good position. Um, and then it all comes together in the Roubaix velodrome in the end. So let's see if we can't get a podium here with Trek Segafredo. So we're at 148 kilometers to go, and we have some bad news because our team leader, Jasper Stoyven, has crashed. Um, we're going to have Alex Kirsch uh, wait for him. I'll put him on follow so he goes back. And we're also going to send Emil's Leipens back there as well. Uh, the good news is that he's getting back up on his bike, um, but... It means, unfortunately, that he's going to have to make an effort here uh, to catch back up. And now that he's out of the group, we need to tell these guys to wait. All right, hopefully they should now be waiting for Stoyven. And there you go, they are. Um, so he'll then be able to uh, follow Kirsch and then... Lipens, and we'll use our teammates to bring us back up towards the front. Um, so hopefully that's uh, 
disaster averted, I would say. Um, but never good to see your team leader crash this early on in the race, certainly. Uh, out front, we still have Peter Weening, uh, the wean dog, doing a nice job in the breakaway. Um, things are really going to kick off when we get to the uh, Trench of Arenberg, which will happen soon enough. But until then, we're going to just try and bring Jasper back up to the front and keep things going with weaning in the break. We're inside of 100 kilometers to go now and inside of 5 kilometers to the Forest of Arenberg, which is traditionally the sector of cobbles that really kicks things off in this race. Um, we're using the 2017 uh, course, which means the Confon Pavel and Carrefour de Labra sectors, sections are going to be the two really decisive ones that come with about 20 kilometers to go. Um, but we've still got the wean dog up in the break. Uh, we're going to lead into Arenberg um, to signal our intent for hopefully getting on the podium of this race. Um, I think, yeah, Leipens is pretty much out of gas at this point, but Pedersen and Stuyven still have support riders to protect them, and Edward Toons is in a pretty good spot, too. Um, <laughs> Arenberg seems to have done a number on Peter Weening because he's about out of gas, too, so we'll stick him on automatic and head back and focus on our big guns now. Um, because, unfortunately, it looks like we got a bit of a split here, actually. Um, so, let's make sure that we can get across here with our guys. Eddie Tunes as well. Um, but, yeah, now the race, I would say, is officially on. So, we're going to have to be gonna have to be careful and on our guard with our big riders to make sure that they stay in good positions and mark any major moves that come from real contenders in this race. So with about 75 kilometers to go, we've managed to get our three big guns in a peloton of 31 riders. De Kunik right now are doing the majority of the work with Casper Askreen, Simon Clark also riding for EF. Um, but that was a big surge over the last sector to break things up. Um, I think at this point we're probably fully committed to Jesper Stuyven as our leader, and we're going to try and use Toons and Pedersen to keep him in the best possible position. Right now we have a little mini train with Toons on the front. Um, but yeah, these Stebar now is riding, although he got a flat tire. Niels Paula up there as well. But these guys are really riding hard already with still 70 kilometers to go. Um, let's send Mads Pedersen back to get a bottle. Uh, and just make sure that we have Stoyven up here near the front, uh, able to respond if any, any of the favorites go for it. So with around 60 kilometers to go, uh, we're actually going to try and switch things up a little bit here. Dekunik doesn't seem to have the energy to continue driving the pace, so we're going to send Mads Pedersen up the road. He'll take a flyer. Hopefully that will force other teams to ride and keep the pressure off of us. Um, and in the meantime, we'll just make sure that we stay up here by the front with Jasper Stoyven. De Kunik do very quickly go to the front with Askreen to try and bring Pedersen back. Unfortunately, we don't really have a ton of energy with Mads Pedersen. Um, so this move working is kind of reliant on De Kunik running out of energy as well, uh, which it does, it, it's hit or miss it seems. Uh, Askreen again now, sort of out of energy. But if Pedersen can just stay off the front, even if it's only 20 seconds like it is right now, um, I think that works well for us uh, in terms of keeping Stoyven in a good position. But now some of the favorites are going, so we gotta we gotta respond to that. And Pedersen is caught as well. Let's go all out with tunes to try and bring Stoyven back up. And that's basically it for our support for the day. It's now pretty much off to Jesper Stoyven. 
Um, we're in a group right now with Gilbert, Van Mark, Betty All, Tunison, Van Barl, Daniel Oss. Um, up the road are Lampart, Pollitt, and Van Avermaet. Um, so if Betty All is attacking, no, it looks like he's riding for Van Mark, which should play into our hands. We're now in the Monzon, Pavel, Cobble section, so things are getting really serious here with uh, 47 kilometers to go. We're going to put Stuyven on 85 effort. We don't want to go too deep here and run out of energy um, as Betty All is making a surge to try and bring us back across, which it looks like it's worked. So now we're in a leading group of eight riders. This is a really good position for us to be in right now. And hopefully um, the pace sort of goes out of the group, although Van Mark immediately attacks over the top. Um, and Gilbert it looks like is going to go after him. But... I'm just going to stay put for now with Stuyven and make the big favorites like Gilbert and Lampart, um, Van Avermaet as well, do the work to try and bring him back. And as soon as I say that, they're attacking. So we got to respond to that for sure. We can't let these two get away. Um, and there we go. We've brought it back successfully. And Lampart immediately tries to go again we got to try and respond to that because if those guys get a gap I just don't think we're gonna have the the firepower in this group behind to chase them down um, so we gotta stay on our toes here through these big cobbled sectors we're heading now towards what's likely to be the two decisive sectors with Confon Pavel and then the Carrefour de Labra um, we're in a really good spot right now, actually, in a group of seven riders. It looks like a lot of them are fairly low on energy. Um, so we're going to try and make a surge here into the Confound Pavel sector. I'm going to put it down to 75 instead of 85 because I don't want to use too much energy. Um, but we'll see if we can't get rid of maybe a rider or two over this cobbled sector. Although for now, it seems like everyone is able to respond and hold this pace. But... I think we're going to try basically the same thing uh, in the Carrefour de Labra, which is now starting as well. Um, we're low on energy for sure. Lampart still looks pretty strong. Um, but if we can stay in the front group uh, after this section, I think it's just going to be about sort of preparing for the sprint. So And also hoping that no other riders decide to attack over the top because we're now down to six in this leading group so one rider we were able to get rid of one rider um seb van mark looks really strong uh he seems to have a lot of energy left in the legs same thing with lampart they look like the two strongest at the moment we need to try and recover some energy if possible um but the number one priority here is to not let any moves go because if the group stays like this i think we could have a decent shot at winning the sprint um 75 sprint for stoyven that will be higher than van mark and lampart and Paulet and postelberger mike tunison has a better sprint but i like those odds for sure so we're going now into the final little 200 meter long cobbled section before we get uh, up towards the Roubaix Velodrome. I think we're in a great position right now. I probably couldn't have asked for this race to unfold any better despite that early crash. Um, I like our odds right now to finish on the podium with Jasper Stuyven. Um, so a lot of good work by the teammates Pedersen and Toons to set this up and put us in this position. We've regained a decent amount of energy, and once we get to the velodrome, I like to try and lead out the sprint because there's not a whole lot of room for playing cat and mouse games. So let's go on the front here. We'll bring it down to 75. Um, Eves Lampart has the same idea. He's up at the front. We're into the final lap now, uh, 2.5 kilometers to go. Um, and we're actually running pretty low on energy, so let's be careful here. I'll bump it down to 60. I don't want to use my energy before the sprint, and now the sprint opens up. We were a little bit late to respond there, uh, 
Mike Tunison is going to win it. In the end, we finished six out of six. I think we could have done better than that. That was my fault. I was looking at, uh, instead of looking at when I wanted to launch my sprint, I was trying to lower my effort so I didn't run out of energy before the sprint. Um, but if you told me beforehand that we would have one of our riders finish with the front group of the race, I would have taken that. Uh, I think the race played out pretty well for us. Unfortunately, I just got it wrong. I think I probably rode a little bit too hard and a little bit too early leading into the sprint. Um, and in the end, it meant that we didn't have energy to actually lead out the sprint from the front once we got uh, to a kilometer to go, or 100 meters, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, six for Stuyven, decent result. In real life, that would be his third best result at Roubaix. Um, but to be honest, I'm not that happy with that because I think we could have done better if we timed our effort in the sprint better than we did. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, we ended up six with Jasper Stuyven. Um, that group of six there ended up finishing a minute and six ahead of the next quickest guy, who was Philippe Gilbert. He was actually the big favorite for the day, so a little surprising that he was the one out of that group of seven that we were able to tail off on the the cobbled sector. Um, Greg Van Avermaet as well, up there in eighth. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always an entertaining race to play. I just wish that we could have... Once we got into the Roubaix Velodrome, I wish we could have timed our our effort a little bit better. I shouldn't have gone on 85 as soon as we got in the Velodrome. I should have waited probably until the last lap to go to the front and start leading things out. Because really, I didn't have enough energy to go from the front that whole way out. Um, if we had done that, you know, I think we could have finished on the podium. If you look at the sprints of these other guys... Stoyven would have been the second best sprinter there after Tunison. It might have been hard to beat him, but I think we probably should have gotten on the podium given the situation that we found ourselves in. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, sixth place at Perry Roubaix is certainly not a bad result. Um, our other two big guys, Edward Toons, finished 25th in the end. Mads Pedersen came home in 30th. Uh, he was the final rider within five minutes of the winning group. Um, so it's nice to get those two guys up there in the top 30 as well. And I believe all our other riders finished the race. Cone de Court was the best of the uh, domestiques coming home in 55th. Alex Kirsch, 65th. Peter Weening, who was in the early breakaway, came home at 87th. And then Emil Zleipens, who we more or less sacrificed to bring... Stoyven back to the front when he crashed was our final finisher in 123rd place. So that's also a success to have all our riders finish. Um, but <laughs> I do kind of want that sprint back. So we might have to re revisit Paris-Roubaix at some point in the future, perhaps in October when the actual race happens. And at that point in time, PCM 2021 will be out. So who knows, might be a good opportunity to play the race again and hopefully get a better result. Anyways, that's going to be it for the video today. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Perry-Roubaix is one of my personal favorite races, so it's always fun to play on PCM, even if we can't watch it in real life. Um, if you have a favorite Perry-Roubaix memory, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. My my personal favorite Perry Roubaix is probably 2016 when Matthew Heyman beat Tom Bonin, four-time winner, uh, in that final sprint. It was a crazy race. For my money, one of the best single days of racing I've ever seen. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend going to check out the highlights or even the backstage pass that uh, Team Orca Green Edge did at that point. Uh, Dan Jones was in charge of those. That's probably the best uh, behind the scenes video I've ever seen of a cycling race. So would highly recommend that one as well if you want to get a, a taste of what it's like to ride Perry roubaix um, But thank you all for watching. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again next time with uh, 
maybe Andy Schleck, next episode of Andy Schleck, or perhaps another, another separate video idea. We'll find out, but thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.